in the UK over the next 10 years, we're going to have issues with being able to supply our homes with energy, to power our lights on cold days to keep us warm. The problem is a number of our power stations, like the one behind me here, are going to close due to coming to the end of their lifespan or because they pollute too much and environmental regulations are closing them down. So what can we do to overcome this issue? Now one way is us as individuals to reduce our energy consumption in our homes. And the government is setting up a number of schemes, which I'm going to talk about in this film, that will help to incentivize us to reduce our energy consumption. We often do not think about energy as it is not visible to us. And we frequently forget that almost everything we do in society uses energy. We cook our food, we wash our clothes, we light our rooms, we heat our houses, whenever we want to. But around 27% of the UK's total energy consumption is due to our energy use in our homes. But where does our energy come from? For electricity in the UK, around 29% comes from coal, around 44% comes from gas, around 17% from nuclear, and around 10% from renewables. Although the contribution of coal is declining and that of renewables is increasing, the contribution of gas, a fossil fuel, will increase. Fluctuations in gas prices have been one of the main causes of our energy bill increases. Reliance on gas also increases the UK's long-term carbon emissions. These figures represent how many power plants are actually built, but not necessarily how much they contribute on a daily basis. The figures are often very different, with coal frequently representing over 40% and gas over 30%, of electricity production on average. Nuclear contributes around 17%, but renewables only around 2 to 3%. A similar amount is transmitted to us by other countries such as France, the Netherlands and Ireland. In the UK, we have been fortunate in not experiencing blackouts for a long time. When the power is cut to our homes because there is not enough energy available, it is at that point that we often realise how much we take energy for granted. However, we tend to view the problem as out there, the realm of governments, businesses and energy companies, but actually a large amount is due to our wasteful consumption of energy in our homes. We just pay the bills and do not bother to manage our demands properly. The phrase demand side management looks at how we as individuals can more sensibly manage our use of energy in our homes to not only avoid power cuts but to help offset our ever increasing energy bills, save money and at the same time reduce our own environmental impacts. The government is introducing policies that can help us to reduce not only our overall energy consumption but when we consume energy. The purpose here is to ensure that at the times of the day when people generally use most energy in the mornings before going to work and in the evenings when we come back from work. Incentives are given to people to reduce their use at these times. The incentives are often financial, either direct payments, reduced energy bills or tax reductions. Our increase in energy bills with rises of around 8% a year, a pattern that is unlikely to change in the near future, is increasingly digging into our spending budgets. But why is this? There are often conflicting messages given by the media, so let me explain the actual breakdown. In 2013, 58% of the average home electricity bill was due to supply costs, profit margins and energy costs. 16% was due to distribution charges. 11% was due to environmental charges. Five percent was due to VAT. Four percent was due to transmission charges. And the final five percent was due to other costs in the energy system. With the average home gas bill, the picture is similar for all charges except the most important one, supply costs and profit margins, which makes up over two thirds or 67 percent of what you pay much more than any other factor. So what can we as individuals do in our homes? We often think that it costs us a lot of money and hassle to install energy efficiency measures, such as loft insulation, efficient light bulbs, new boilers, solar panels, etc. But there are a number of government programs that remove the upfront cost completely. One program, called the Green Deal, 
work so that the measures installed are paid back through the savings you make. In other words, you do not pay for anything up front and your bill also reduces. Another government programme that runs alongside the Green Deal, called the Energy Company Obligation, works by providing free insulation and heating measures to low-income communities. This is a legal obligation on energy companies, which removes perceived issues with cost, time and hassle. The government is also providing advanced gas and electricity meters, called smart meters, to every home in the UK over the next few years. This will allow you to see how much energy you are using as you use it, and to locate where energy is being used in your home and how much energy certain appliances use. Furthermore, this will remove estimated bills and allow both you and your supplier to have accurate measurements of how much energy you use. These smart meters will also enable the potential for tariffs, where you can get paid by your energy supplier to reduce your consumption at times of the day when we are at most risk from power cuts. We should all take advantage of these new government programmes to help us reduce our energy consumption. This will help benefit us financially, but at the same time, help our country reduce our carbon emissions.